An estimated 4 million Americans are affected by fibromyalgia. It's a chronic pain condition that can be difficult to diagnose and describe. Vicki shares her story with us. My name is Vicki, and I have been living with chronic pain for over 20 years. I first started experiencing fatigue and pain all over my body while at work. Then it started to also affect my sleep, which was difficult since I'm a nurse and I have to be on my feet all day. At the time, I was also raising two small children and some days the pain was so bad that I would have to stay in bed all day. It took me almost a year to find out what was causing my pain. When my rheumatologist told me that I had fibromyalgia, that information was life-changing for me. To help raise awareness about this condition, Vicki is here along with our good friend and colleague, Dr. Frida Lewis Hall of Pfizer. And thank you both for being here. Vicki, I wanna ask you first and foremost, how are you feeling today? Um, I still have pain, but I've uh, learned to manage it. And Dr. Frida, can you explain what fibromyalgia is? Yeah, so fibromyalgia is a specific type of pain. It's chronic, it's widespread, and it's often accompanied by tenderness. Now, we don't exactly know the cause of fibromyalgia. However, it's believed to be uh, related to overactive nerves. So what happens is these overactive nerves amplify the pain sensation that we you know, might feel from, from day to day. Now, in some cases, the symptoms gradually accumulate over time. But in some cases, there's a trigger. It can be physical trauma, surgery, infection, um, even significant psychological stresses can, can do this. And some research indicates that, you know, genetics might be playing a role here also. And if you have lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, or irritable bowel syndrome, you could be more likely to have fibromyalgia. A recent study has also indicated that there may be a link between gut bacteria and fibromyalgia pain. Researchers are trying to understand why there are differences in GI bacteria in people with fibromyalgia and whether changes in the gut bacteria play a role in causing fibromyalgia or whether it just indicates that you have fibromyalgia. Frida, now let's talk about what those symptoms may be. People who have fibromyalgia may experience deep muscle pain and soreness. They may also have morning stiffness and radiating pain and sensitivity to the touch. As Vicki described, you can have profound fatigue, sleep disturbances. In some cases, people have digestive issues and difficulty concentrating, uh, which actually has a term, it's called fibro fog. Fibromyalgia can be difficult to diagnose because there isn't a specific test for it. Symptoms can mimic other conditions. Doctors often have to rule out other causes before making a diagnosis. This can take some time to do. Because symptoms fluctuate and are sometimes unpredictable, this can cause emotional and mental distress. And adults with fibromyalgia are over three times more likely to have depression and anxiety because living with chronic pain can cause a lower quality of life. Now, Dr. Frida, tell us who is most at risk. This is most prevalent in women who are middle-aged. However, it can affect men. It can even affect children. Now, it's most often diagnosed between the ages of 20 and 50 years of age. Unfortunately, there is no cure for fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. However, it can be effectively managed um, with a variety of treatments or with a combination of treatments. They may include uh, various changes in lifestyle, medications, and a range of different therapies. Physical activity may help manage fibromyalgia, but listen to your body and pace yourself. Talk to your doctor to find the best strategy for you. Establishing good habits and routines to improve the quality of sleep, that can also be helpful. And Vicki, you have found a way to manage your pain, and what advice do you have for anyone out there living with fibromyalgia? Well, I had an amazing doctor. I did everything that she ever asked me to do. I never refused to try something and I was able to go back to work. I also then became a pain advocate. I started to speak for people with pain. And it's very important for people to understand 
that when you have pain, don't isolate yourself. Don't stay away from the world. You've got to get out there. You still have to be a part of the world so you can, you can survive. But, but there is hope. You can do it. Thanks for that message. And thank you, Vicki, because there is hope, there is help. People do not have to do this alone. And for more information, you can go to gethealthystayhealthy.com. Uh, there's information there on uh, resources for fibromyalgia. And of course, while you're there, you can sign up for our monthly newsletter. Thanks, Dr. Frieda. And Vicki, thanks thank for sharing you. your story. Really appreciate it.